Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. Yad e athena ana she e on re j vanilla and schle. Thanks for coming. So, the usual updates I have here on the channel is that I'm bringing you close as possible to the chip fabrication process. Well, specifically quantum chip, quantum symmetric chips. And they're not they're not semiconductor chips, but they do have some metal oxides on there. But they're not they're not necessarily CMOS either. We don't dope these devices. Anyways, so I, it's just enough that you can see the end result and what it looks like. So that's the usual update. But the other update is I have been I recently participated in a podcast. From the UK, called Barrington James podcast, and I had a discussion with them talking about the transition from living on the Navajo Nation, doing Navajo things, doing doing things you know, on my own, and living out in the wilderness, transitioning from that, and then doing things, learning things, and then get, getting. What is the word? Transported? <laughs> it sounds wrong. Maybe it's a bit of a joke. I mean, you could say that you've been transported somewhere because where I live in that region, the Four Corners region, New Mexico, Arizona, Utah, uh, Colorado, in that region, it's known for quote unquote UFO sightings and things like that. But Area 51 is actually just, just right up there to the west. Of where I live, there's a place called Nevada. Nevada is just right there next to Arizona. So, I mean, people make jokes about it. We always make jokes about it where I'm from, but that's just how it is. Anyways, to say that I'm being transported or have been transported somewhere by means of a UFO, just kidding. Um, that in itself is just part of the culture. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is that. There is a certain transition that you experience in leaving the tribe, and also considerations for what it's like to be outside of the tribe. You see, because when you are in the tribe, you have a, a certain identity, and well, individual-wise, like for example, on my own, I have my own things to consider. Leaving the tribe, housing, how does that work? What language do people use? How do what is it? What do people mean when they say something like rendezvous in 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 some sense? Apparently, it's a French word that means to gather somewhere or something like that in English. But people who speak English use the word rendezvous anyway, and so they adopt all of these fancy terms that are not from they're not, not they're not English oriented. But they borrow them into English language and they're just using them in everyday conversation. Oh, like they say, don't put on a facade, don't be fake or something. Um, things like that. So all these things I had to learn, and I did learn it. I don't use those like I don't use those words myself that much. Not, not that I've noticed. But these things they happen regardless, you see. And you have to take those into consideration. And then learn how to express. Oh, it's a good one. Yeah, learn how to express what you're trying to say in a certain way. Because if I say it without context, or if I say something without giving some background info, or at least trying to make it digestible. For the broad audience that is mankind in my immediate vicinity, or even on the digital vicinity, as I would, as I would now call it, the internet. Me being new to the internet, <laughs> that kind of thing. These were more or less related topics that we discussed on those podcasts, and also how does all of this. Linguistics, 
relate and connect to quantum technology, my research work on the quantum hardware, and how we how do we use that to actually not just study it, but also develop it and advance it, and then also train others. These these things are topics of discussion that we had there. So very fruitful, I think. And it's just really a matter of learning. But there are hurdles, there are things that you experience that 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 are difficult or they might be not they're not permanently difficult but it's just it's temporarily difficult <laughs> you experience it for a short period of time and then you overcome it and then there's a learning technique in order to do that because every problem is not solved the same way but there's there's a way of, of finding out all the parameters that are needed to overcome or at least identify <clears throat> identify the problem oftentimes it's just a mindset it's it's a mindset of how do you think about something and there's there's a consideration in those thoughts those those ramblings of the mind on like what is possible how possible is it is it me that you're looking for just kidding if you are having having maybe discouragements of some sort how do you overcome these things so yeah not that deep not that philosophical but still it's worth mentioning somewhere so i did so we did talk about this so we'll we'll get the podcast out soon with barrington james and then it will be posted here i believe not on my channel but on a different channel you'll see it posted here and there but i'll kind of reiterate those things and then the other thing is talk about some extra projects we got related to those but yeah anyways here on the channel i have some things i want to do some of those things include a list that i have more like a backlog of video ideas pertaining to quantum chip design and some miscellaneous things like tape based microfluidic technology and i mean all of these things are related to low cost sustainable practices for building and ex exploring technology at the nanoscale so nanotechnology and quantum technology as you know they are somewhat intertwined indefinitely <laughs> if you might say that if you could say that but regardless there's a way to design this as well and make this possible because when we design chips and, and build structures in the, in the laboratory or in any, in any setting there's there's some constraint to consider but how do you build a chip that's what i want to talk about like k layout is a specific program it's open source. You can draw lines and geometries and things like that. And then on the other hand, in the Python programming setup, the environment, you can actually use a library such as Shapely. There's another one called Turtle. So these, these programs you can actually use to generate a design. And right now, what I'm trying to do is use these generative design, reiterative patterns, and so forth, to actually create the design file, the flavor that will go and turn this G code, the set of coordinates called a G code, and then make it usable in a lithography machine. Because a lithography machine actually does use a sort of G code that we call a GDS file or GPF file if we're talking specifically about Wraith Nano lithography or Wraith EB lithography machines. So I believe it is more or less the same for a laser lithography system. So if you really want to understand how to build a chip from, from the ground up and then also build your own lithography system, you kind of have to understand what these things are and the terms that are associated with those, those techniques. So file flavors, big word there. I made that word up. But it's important because it's simple English, but there's an end goal 
to what it to what it means. Anyways, we also could talk about media wiki. So that's one of my other projects is since we have open source designs, open source things we want to share with the world, we by by we I mean me and whoever wants to join the open source project. I will start it off, but people will join eventually and say, I like being part of this project and I'll be happy with it. But there are things I'd like to talk about specifically on this, this design aspect, which is taking a documentation, sort of like a tutorial that is, is put on to media wiki. So Wiki, Wikipedia format, it's a Wikipedia format of documentation. So you take all these high quality pictures, you can upload it to something like Flickr. Flickr is an open source, sort of like a repository. You can, you can make an account there, build an account, and then take pictures with your phone, upload them, or you can render something in Blender, an open source modeling, like 3D modeling program. And, and render really high quality, even like 16K, 16K drawings, images of, of, of something that looks realistic, like photorealistic, or it could look just like a, just some uh, minimal texture 3D object. <laughs> it kind of flat, it looks kind of flat as far as the texture is concerned. Something like that, render the image, you can upload on Flickr. For the world to see and then you can choose to make it open source you can choose to make it what is the word public domain or, or something similar so that people can use it freely and your name is pretty much attached to it people will know where it comes from so especially especially when you really customize it and then people start to get familiar with your design aspects you as a designer as a fabricator or a builder a a person who a person who has a vision for something for the long term so that's the whole idea is being able to take that place the documents together place it in a, a page called a wikimedia page or media wiki page and then use that format to show the world how to do something formally and you can actually search it up easily um, Google. So this result will always pop up on Google somewhere and then people can learn and you make your contribution to the world, whether it's scientific or otherwise. So that's, that's just, uh, that's, that's the plan to show how, how to do this and how to take advantage of these techniques for those of us who are open source minded. <laughs> and then We'll also talk about specifically, a bit more specific, which is Kiskit Metal. Kiskit Metal is, of course, used for quantum chip design, and it's open source as well. We can use that to take in the constraints that are considered in quantum chips, and then use that as a way to show people how to form the open source source codes. So the thing is the source code there's no there are no tutorials available in video format on how to create source codes for Kiskit Metal. But that is the plan. The plan is to, to produce some video tutorials on how to do that. So I'll get to that here soon. That's a bit that's gonna be coming up more more recently, I should say. I I, I plan on doing that sooner than later but that's one of the things that and some other linguistics topics related to navajo language yes so and i'm supposed to head to texas this this december december 2023 i will be in texas to talk about quantum education in the navajo language and perhaps even somewhat on topics related to my research my phd research so that's what we got for now, and we'll, we'll share more later. And I, I, I thank you all for coming. Take care out there, and have a nice day.